Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today we're going to react to a YouTube channel called Traditional Chinese Paintings. So look at the top, he has a really nice um, cut of a Chinese classical painting in ink, which is really kind of cool. Um, the logo is also a painting, so you don't know who it is. It's just another painting, but you get a feel for what they're going to cover. Um, and then you have an intro video is artist Zifei. I don't know if that is the artist or one of the artists on this channel. It's not very clear. He has uploads and then popular uploads. Probably you want to move popular uploads above. Flower paintings, grape paintings, lotus paintings, and horse paintings. So let's see what this is about. So our first video is called Chinese Brush Painting of Peony. And I don't think this has any, it didn't have caps options, so if it's in Chinese, it's in Chinese. Start again. So he has a really nice dramatic uh, music intro. I think he's using maybe a Sony camera where it's like zoom in and out, it's not good. So right off the bat, has this really strong music. He has the logo, kind of the, it's called, but there's this classic stamp that goes on all kind of Chinese documents for ownership. And they always mark it. I can't think of the word, it's escaping me, but it's in the Shogun. But <laughs> So all Chinese paintings usually, traditionally, like you know, 1918, earlier stuff, will always have these marks from different inks of the owners of the painting. So it's not only the artist that might be have their mark, but it's usually the owners are the marks. So... That's always interesting because you'll see these classical Chinese paintings that have all these ink stamps on them. You're like, are these all the artists? You're like, no, those are the owners. <laughs> Nowadays, you kind of have the same thing in the West in the sense that you don't have it on the paintings. The paintings are always signed Van Gogh, Picasso, but they're organized in particular wings by the collectors in the certain order they want to present, not really what the museum is presenting. So a lot of people think they're curated that way, but actually it's controlled by the collectors. So there's obviously that control factor. Let's continue on. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. All right, there's a lot of dead space. Let's go a little forward. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> It's so funny, the super traditional Chinese music. I feel like we're gonna eat Chinese food any moment. Because <laughs> any Chinese restaurant, they'll have this traditional Chinese music. But I mean, it's traditional Chinese painting, so the music suit should be traditional. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I like the technique. I'm not sure why he's wearing this heavy, heavy jacket. It must be really freezing in his house, I'm assuming. So he doesn't have any heat probably, so he has a full jacket on. Let's keep going. So yeah, one thing I'll say also is about the camera. It's set on auto, which is generally what you want. But if you're just doing top down one vision, I would probably set the manual focus on um, get in and then set it to manual once it's locked in and crisp because you're having this constant zoom in and out. And I think it's because they're using Sony cameras. Sony cameras are known for that a lot. It happens a little bit with Canon, but I think Sony is really prevalent for this. Skip ahead a little bit here. So the other really cool thing about this is it's really just 
red, darker to light. So it's really only one color mixing with a little bit of white to make it whiter, but really just two colors. So it's pretty interesting. Let's skip to the end here closer. Oh, he's going to add some green finally. Oh, yellow too. Uh oh, <laughs> that's going to be three colors. What's interesting here he's kind of made sure the painting's completely dry for the ink and then he's adding that yellow layer on top so it's completely dry there it's not wet otherwise you'd have that bleed between the two colors and form an orange so i think we got a feel for this one let's go on to the next video this one is called mountains and water chinese ink painting the volume's not too bad And you gotta love the Chinese brush that has this really thin um, thing. It's a really great brush. I've seen it used by friends of mine who paint with a big brush. It's a really, really good brush to paint with outside of just ink. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. It's interesting they changed the watermark to a more modern one in this one versus the traditional. I think the traditional mark looks a lot better than the modern version, but. Also, you note the music is a little more modern. Uh, it sounds kind of like elevator music now, so more modern. I don't know which one I would go with. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So another point is that ideally there would be voiceover kind of discussing philosophy, like you're going to the really dark uh, center and then you go with the light wash for the background. So it'd be nice to kind of describe what's going on there, how, what kind of effects you want to look for, like the abstraction of the mountains versus the reality, because it's not really a true realism, but in that sense it's realism within a certain style. So that would be cool to describe it. Also, it's weird too. I don't know if the paper's dirty or they did something with the paper. Ugh. Let's skip ahead a little bit. This one's kind of putting me to sleep for some reason. So they are adding a little bit of color there, a little blue, a little brown. Skip ahead a little bit here.
So I'm assuming since he's doing this round that he's going to cut it round in the end. I don't know if that's the actual intention. I really like this bowl that he's dipping in. It's very beautiful. I think we get a point at that one. Let's move on to the next video. The next one's called Spring of Water Chinese Ink Painting. I really like the dramatic kind of feel to this. Again, the music's a little more modern, which I guess makes more sense because you're selling to a newer audience, so. But if it's traditional, the traditional music isn't offensive, I think. It's kind of a different call there, you know? It's like if you did landscapes, you do country music to it, you know? The branches are super straight, so would they really look like that? It's kind of. It's amazing, too, because it doesn't look like he's getting stuff on his sleeve. I assume you get messed as hell doing it this way. With a sleeve just right there, I would have no sleeve at all doing this myself, but. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. My style wise, I really like the abstraction of the branches. It doesn't feel like a natural branch, but it doesn't feel unnatural at all either. So it's kind of like that in-between magical feel. Just feel a little more traditional at this point, but modernized version, of kind of elevator style music of traditional music. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. Let's see, add some color. So this is really cool, I think, too, is the use of negative space. So he has this really nice space here, a space there, and then just a little bit of accent at the bottom. So I think that's really cool. The figure is beautiful here. It's just very subtle. It's very intense. And all with one brush, which is the amazing part here. I mean, that's how the versatility of that brush is so cool. Big brush stroke, small brush stroke. So I think that's the end of that. It's just really nice, like, use of negatives. Oh, no, it's not done. Skip ahead a little bit towards the end. the clouds in the background or what? I don't know. It's interesting he'd do that layer first and then do the harder layer later, but it seems like it would be easier way to do it, to build up. I guess it's just in a foliage in the background, I'm not sure what he's kind of doing there. Wow, that really dried out like light, nothing there. That's weird, because it was pretty dark there and it lightened up a lot. Oh, he did change the brush. Oh, see, he's added the traditional script, which is super badass, I think. You don't really have this in Western art. You do have it a little bit with like graffiti writing a little bit, but usually it's Pure graffiti writing or figurative, you don't really combine the two. I do a little bit of this in my work because I've seen it with Islamic work as well where you abstract nature and then you might add some script. And I think it's just super badass to have this really beautiful calligraphy here. And he has like the stamp, the traditional stamp here with ancient Chinese and then another version of it. So he has two different stamps that are from different 
errors within Chinese. So you have kind of connecting two different empires per se, like ancient one and a slightly middle age. It's kind of like combining middle age stamp from the middle ages combined with ancient history. And, and, and then you're adding this modern script in traditional Chinese, which is from pre-1949. So it's just really cool combination of elements, I think. And a really great use of negative space. And you have a little stamp up here in the corner as well for, I think it's the artist, I'm not sure. But just really cool. A little bit shaky camera there, but. All right, so that's basically that. I'm trying to see who the artist is, because I was looking before and it just didn't make any sense. not sure who the artist is at all because in the bout there's just no description at all so you don't know if it's one artist two artists i mean it looks like one artist i just can't really tell and they haven't really identified themselves in chinese traditional painting there wouldn't be the artist wouldn't be as well known it's kind of similar to early middle ages uh the artist wasn't really called out until the early Renaissance with Giotto was like the first one kind of called out and you knew who the artist was. But from that time earlier, all the way up to the Roman era, there was just, the artist was completely non considered and it was just craftsman style thing. So it was never uh, taken out. So there might be a website. I don't know. It's not obvious based on the YouTube channel, which is really not good to have no link to your website. There's no, Social media links either, which would be a really nice ad as well. You want to have something there you can drop in there brand wise. But overall, I like it as a YouTube channel standalone to learn about traditional Chinese ink. It would be really nice as well to have kind of a voiceover and caps, obviously, in English if you translate it. So there could be a little of improvement. And they already have 56,000 subscribers. So if you added English subtitles on top of this, you'd probably gain easily 10, 20,000 subscribers. I, my, that's my guess, just from people that are, you know, hardcore artists and they just want to learn how to do traditional ink drawing from a Chinese master. So that was really cool. Um, I recommend it to kind of check it out. Uh, if you like to subscribe, you can subscribe below and I'll see you on the next artistry.